Hello again. My name's James, and this is the fourth episode of the Metal Gear Solid 3 Foxhound Rank video walkthrough. Today we're taking a break from our trek through Snake Eater to cover some basic hand-to-hand -hand skills. Many have noted having trouble with CQC, so today we're going to focus on grabbing, grappling, hold-ups, slamming, throat slits, and melee with weapons. CQC is important for improvisational combat on any difficulty, and it factors heavily in the Foxhound rank boss fights ahead, the fights versus Volgan and the boss in particular. In order to better illustrate instruction on manual controls as well as accommodate different learning styles, I'm going to display the corresponding button inputs in a corner window. I am playing this on the PlayStation 3 version, so apologies to 360 owners. Let's start by looking at the difference between weapons used for CQC and the weapons for what the previous Metal Gear Solid games call CQB, or Close Quarters Battle. First, we'll open the backpack from the Survival Viewer, and then open the Weapons submenu. Icons for weapons that are compatible with CQC have red letters in the lower left corner. Icons for CQB weapons do not. Without the red letters, Snake cannot slam or take soldiers hostage. Note that the game places CQC compatible weapons at the top of this submenu. This will save you some time hunting through the menu. We're going to build this tutorial from the ground up, so let's start with melee. Unarmed, Snake has a three-part melee combo. Sometimes, though, you'll only need one punch, so the timing is important. On the controller, you'll note that these are discrete, full taps on the analog face buttons. To keep your hands in the screen coordinated, focus on one tap per move instead of mashing the button repeatedly. The third move in Snake's combo is a low kick to the shins. Kicks will drain more stamina than punches, but they will also knock a soldier down. We'll look at how to follow up on a kick later. As you see here, Snake will attack with his three-hit combo when he has a CQC-compatible weapon equipped. When holding a two-handed weapon, such as the Patriot or automatic rifles, Snake will not attack with his three-hit combo. Note that Snake only attacks once when I tap the analog button using the same three-hit combo pattern from before. He also steps further forward when using a two-handed weapon. Now, while Snake uses his three-hit combo when holding throwable weapons such as grenades, magazines, and food, these weapons are CQB rather than CQC. While holding them, Snake cannot grab. The overhead smash attack from before is unique to the Patriot. Snake will swing most two-handed weapons horizontally like this. The SAA Revolver has a special melee combo that I'm particularly fond of. Instead of a three-hit punch-punch-kick combo, Snake will hit three times with a pistol whip combo. One swipe with a pistol is slightly faster than a normal punch, and it will also take off more stamina. The third move in the combo hits low and also knocks the enemy down, as will a kick. SAA melee can be invaluable when trying to get through European Extreme's escape from Groznygrad. I highly recommend it. Let's look at one final exception. When holding TNT, Snake will attack with a CQB 3-hit combo. However, the CQB attack button is also the same as the detonation button. Make sure that you've unequipped the TNT before attempting to punch. This is HQ. Patrol here. Next, let's observe how this variety of CQB melee attacks works on guards. We'll knock to call a soldier outside. Huh? What's that sound? And then we'll hold him up to be our crash test dummy. You'll see here the easiest way, in my opinion, to drop the muzzle after you've held up a guard Freeze. is to tap the R2 button to unequip your gun. You see here that limiting your combo to the first two hits will keep this soldier on his feet. Having him remain in the same place can make him a lot easier to control as a hostage. And a lot easier to knock out. You only need to connect with your combo's kick to speed along a soldier's awakening. 
Obviously, this is video game logic and not how to resuscitate an unconscious man. Freeze. You might compare the logic here to putting out a lit match with a blowtorch. You know, more of the same does not cancel out the same. But in this world, that's what works. Press and hold the attack button while holding the movement stick in any direction to change the punch input into a CQC slam. Press and hold the attack button gently to grab an enemy using CQC. Also be sure that you're not holding the motion stick in any direction. We'll look at this move in greater detail shortly. Take a look here and you'll see that the first punch in the combo hits the enemy in the face, and the second punch hits the enemy in the abdomen. If you're standing behind your enemy with that second punch, you have a chance to hit them in the kidney. Punching an enemy in the kidney is an instant knockout. Let's return to throwing in CQC. As we've already seen, tap the analog button quickly without holding the movement stick in any direction to punch. And to throw, hold the movement stick toward the enemy and then press and hold the analog button. You can let go of the attack button when Snake enters the throwing animation. Next, we'll look at what happens when soldiers receive the full combo, including the final kick. If you'll remember, punches keep enemies on their feet and make them easier to knock out. Connecting with a kick sends enemies flying like ragdolls to land face down on the ground. Kicking to the ground is much more likely to result in an alert when they get up. Snake can also attack with a sidearm using an enemy as a shield. We'll look at that more closely later. Let's grab this guy in CQC so that we can position him for better viewing. Watch as the soldier cartwheels in the air in response to the kick at the end of the three hit combo. Freeze. To prevent a soldier who's been knocked onto the ground and is still conscious from going into alert when he stands up, raise your weapon with a square button. Soldiers conscious on the ground will not go flying in response to kicks. This will simply knock them out. If you knock a soldier down immediately after he goes into alert, you still have a short window for a holdup, but only after you've kicked him to the ground. You cannot hold him up when he's still standing. What's that sound? If you send a soldier into a cartwheel near a wall or other barrier, you can control his landing better than out in the open. Here I stalk with the D-pad so he doesn't hear my approach. Freeze. And my attack places him in the corner. If you're moving cautiously through the game, knocking out soldiers and holding them up after you've kicked them awake can be a good way to give yourself breathing room by breaking their patrol routes. Freeze. Now let's go back to the Patriots' special overhead smash. Hitting a soldier with this will drop him backwards without a cartwheel. This again can make his falling easier to control. Freeze. Hold him up by pressing lightly on the weapon button. Now because the Patriot hits high, it will not connect to the soldier on the ground. You need to hit grounded soldiers with a low attack, such as a kick. And of course this all requires playing off of a clear game file, because that's the only way to get the Patriot. You can cancel attack animations by toggling your weapon on and off. This is the same as using Tactical Reload, wherein you unequip and then re-equip a weapon to refill its clip. To execute a Tactical Reload, you'll tap the R2 button twice quickly. To execute a CQB animation cancel, tap R2 only once, as you see in the lower left corner. Since some attacks have a longer wind-up, such as the Patriot or the XM-16, be sure not to tap R2 before making contact. 
While not very often useful, you can use the animation cancel to cycle between attacks. This is particularly useful with the SAA revolver during the escape from Groznygrad on European Extreme. With CQC unavailable, Snake must rely upon CQB. Knocking down the enemy, cancelling the attack animation, and running to where he lands to hold him up is a viable strategy. Let's summarize the main points of melee combat so far. Snake will attack differently while holding different weapons, and each physical attack hits a different area on the body. A straight head attack, such as a punch, will keep an enemy standing, whereas a vertical head attack with a patriot will knock the enemy backward onto the ground. Low attacks, such as a kick and a three-hit combo, will send enemies into flying cartwheels, and an abdominal straight attack, such as a punch, will keep the enemy standing with a chance of hitting his kidney. Now, two-handed weapons, such as the XM-16 and the shotgun, also have sweeping abdominal attacks with different effects. We'll look at those now. Here we see that Snake cannot hit a grounded soldier with a vertical head attack. However, a sweeping abdominal attack with a rifle stock will connect. As with low attacks, a sweeping abdominal attack on a standing enemy will send him flying. Freeze. We'll wrap up our section on CQB with a look at the SAA revolver. The revolver connects twice as punches do, once to the head and once to the abdomen, while leaving enemies standing. The third attack connects low, as does a kick, and it drains more stamina and has greater reach than a kick. You can hold up enemies with the revolver, but, possibly in reference to the standing duels famous from westerns, Snake cannot run while holding the revolver at his side. See here, he just spins around. And with that, we leave CQB to focus on the most basic move of CQC, the throwdown. As noted before, some players tap the attack What's button repeatedly to get Snake to slam, and that's not very effective. Again, hold the movement stick in the enemy's direction, then press and hold the attack button. Let go of the attack button as soon as Snake enters the throwing animation, and you've taken him out. Let's take Snake on a CQC rampage through this area. If you're still uncertain about how to perform throws, watch my hands in the lower left corner for multiple examples of how to pull this off. Who's that? Damn it. Radio, call HQ. Uh. Watch out for knives when approaching from the front. You can also use CQC to tear soldiers away from their riot shields. Many players have noted that they have trouble non-lethally grabbing soldiers in CQC because they accidentally slit their throats. The secret here is an analog button pressure sensitivity on the PS3. Let's look at a more familiar example of pressure sensitivity before touching on grabs. As we covered before, press gently on the weapon button to raise a two-handed gun without firing. The gun will fire if you press down firmly. 
This is analogous to the way that grabbing and throat slitting works in CQC. In CQC, you'll press and hold the attack button lightly to grab a soldier and press firmly to slit his throat. Accidental throat slits are like accidental gunfire from two-handed weapons. If you find yourself pressing the attack button too hard, try pressing on the outside of the button. I'll illustrate this below. Here, if I press down hard, the analog button will only register a light hold. When holding an enemy, tap quickly on the D-pad to choke him out. Let's look at that one more time. Note that I do Brace not press that. the movement stick in any direction when grabbing. To do so would throw the soldier down rather than grab him. Because this can cause many players so much difficulty that it prevents them from enjoying the banquet of gameplay offered in MGS3, we're going to watch this one more time. I'd like to note here that these videos are recorded in 720p. On YouTube, you can upgrade the resolution to see the controller usage in greater detail. Looking at the controller one more time, you'll see that my thumb is not covering the circle on the attack button. We'll call this the rule of thumb. If you want a gentle touch, make sure that you can still see the symbol on the button you're pressing. Next, we'll look at the options at your disposal once you've grabbed a soldier. Throwing a soldier prone without knocking him out is one of the most important techniques to master. To do this, grab your man with a gentle touch just now illustrated. Once he's in your arms, you'll continue to hold him stationary if you do not move the left analog stick. However, if you press forward and tap the attack button, Freeze. you'll throw him face down. From here, simply raise your weapon without firing to hold him up on the ground. I'm going to illustrate the button inputs one more time. Pay attention to the timing used with the attack button. Press back on either the left Freeze. analog stick or D-pad, release the CQC hold button, and then immediately tap that same button. Freeze. Pressing back on the left analog stick will throw the soldier on his back to Snake's side. To round out our study of CQC grab throws, we'll watch the entire process one last time. We need to knock this guy out and then wake him up to get him off the ground. It's easiest to hold up the grounded soldier if you hold the square button during the throw animation. With your gun raised, the soldier will go into hold up mode as soon as he recovers from the fall. And you know, why not? Let's look at it a fourth time. As illustrated in the previous video, once thrown down, guards will not get up. Even if you hit them with live ammo. HQ, please respond. This is HQ. Patrol here. However, if the downed guard hears the click of an empty chamber, he'll conclude that he's in no danger and then leave hold-up mode. Let's get the attention of all the guards in this area to show how valuable CQC holds can be in combat. Radio, call HQ! 
If you find yourself surrounded, equip a sidearm and then grab an enemy with a light hold. Very quickly release the circle button and press and hold the square button. Snake will raise his sidearm while holding the soldier hostage. Without letting go of square, press and hold the R1 shoulder button to enter first person view. You'll keep your hostage and can fire more safely at your enemies because of your human shield. However, be aware that your hostage will escape as soon as you empty your clip. You cannot reload while holding a hostage. Again, you have about half a second after letting go of the circle button to press and hold square without losing your hostage. Cover! To further illustrate the difference between the controls for grabbing enemies and the controls for slitting throats, we'll take a look at throat slits directly. Observe the difference in pressure that I apply to the circle button when I grab and hold this guy and then when I slit his throat. As you can see, slitting a throat requires a complete depression of the circle button. Using half pressure keeps the soldier alive and in my arms. Once again, we'll grab the Gru soldier's attention to illustrate these techniques multiple times. Again observe that to grab this guy, I press the circle button almost flush with the face of the controller. And then depress completely to slit his throat. Light touches grab and hold. and pressing hard kills. CQC is very strong in this game. If you're playing with lethal tactics, even on extreme as you see here, you can take out a lot of enemies using this technique. However, they will overrun Snake eventually. To review, we've looked at forms of CQB unarmed, with sidearms, with grenades, with two-handed weapons, and the SAA revolver. We've examined how to cancel animations on CQB attacks. We've also focused on the importance of thumb pressure when using two-handed weapons, observing that light pressure raises the gun while a hard press fires. We've looked at the same manual technique in effect for CQC, designating the difference between non-lethal grabs and throat slits, and we've looked at Snake's options once a soldier is held hostage, including throwing forward and to his side, and firing with a sidearm while using the hostage as a human shield. All of these techniques in combination open up a playground of possibilities in Metal Gear Solid 3. CQC is versatile as a tool for sneaking as well as for combat. It provides a variety of methods for taking control of an area by stalking and hunting enemies, and it also offers an equal number of aggressive options to quell a storm of soldiers during an alert. I hope that the sub-window in this video has clarified some confusion prevalent about how to grab and not kill soldiers. As a bonus topic, I'll show you how to strafe using auto-aim. 
Using the light touch to raise a two-handed weapon will not lock on to an enemy by itself. To lock on to an enemy, face his general direction and then press and hold the L1 button. As long as you have your weapon raised, Snake will keep aim trained on him and will strafe accordingly. As shown in the previous video, this is vital to a winning strategy against Young Ocelot. However, this is imprecise and you will likely not target vital points with auto-aim. I'm overrunning these soldiers with riot shields here only because I'm using the Patriot and its infinite ammunition. Weapons with limited ammunition, such as the Scorpion or XM-16, will run dry before a riot shield breaks. And though this might have been apparent by now, you press and hold the square button to raise a sidearm. To fire, you release the square button briefly and then immediately depress it again to keep the weapon raised. This is a distinguishing feature of most weapons compatible with CQC, including non-gun weapons such as the knockout cigarettes. Non-CQC weapons typically work the other way around. Although, of course, there are exceptions, such as the SAA revolver, as we see here. And now I leave you with a final demonstration of pressure sensitivity and a brief flirtation with chaos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time as we continue through Snake Eater.